everyone, Steve from Backcountry Gallery here, and today we have something a little different. See, I keep coming up with short little Photoshop tips and tricks, so I've decided to start a video series with them. These aren't going to replace my normal videos, but I thought it would make a cool supplement to them. For this first video in the series, I want to share a really cool trick I figured out for straightening a horizon without doing any cropping afterwards. However, before we get started, I also want to mention my new ebook, Secrets to Stunning Wildlife Photography, is now on sale. It's 290 pages of my best tips and advice for capturing wildlife photos, so please make sure you check the link below and uh, check that book out. Now, let's turn to the computer, and I'm going to show you how to do this cool little trick. Okay, so let's take a look at this photo right here. As you can see, I'm going to grab a grid line just drop it down here. As you can see, we have a fairly crooked horizon going on here. This is really, really off. In fact, it was straight, but I had to make it crooked for the video. So. Uh, let me show you how this works. Normally what we would want to do to straighten our horizon is we go to our crop tool and we use a little straighten button right up here and you just click that and the way the straighten tool works if you've never used it before you just click hold and drag just hold my mouse down click on one end of the horizon then you go to the other end and you release and when you do that you get a uh, nice straight horizon but if you look at it we have a pretty nasty side effect sometimes this isn't a big deal but as you can see the Photoshop wants to go ahead and crop our photo so that it doesn't have any blank information in it because basically what's happened here is when we turn the photo in order to keep it square we're gonna to have to crop out some of this stuff and if there's stuff in here that you wanted in which in this case there is that's kind of a problem right because right down here where we have the splash I wanted to see all of that and up here where we have these trees I'd really kinda of like those to be there I'm not too concerned about this area here and I'm not real concerned about the area over here but still uh, I would like to have all of the photo in here. So how do we fix this? Well, what I do is I go ahead and I just drag this out just to the point where I, I'm happy with what I'm getting. I'm going to pull this down here so because I want to get all this little splash area here. This side here I'm not as concerned. I'm going to move it out a little bit. And uh, again, I want to make sure I get these trees in. I don't like missing part of these clouds either, so I'm going to move that up going to go ahead and hit enter or return depending on your keyboard and there we go I have my nice straight image but now I have this white area here to deal with now a lot of people would just try to clone in there and honestly that never quite looks right it's really really rough um, so I came up with a little bit different method basically what we're going to do is we're going to start by hitting command J and that's going to duplicate our background layer over here now we're going to hit command T and that's going to activate our transform tool now what we want to do is, you can see little dots around here indicating that the transform tool is active. We just want to click anywhere inside of them and select warp from the resulting menu. Now what the warp tool does is it lets us kind of pull and uh, tug our image a little bit and I'm going to show you how this works. I'm just going to go ahead and grab these little knobs and just kind of pull the image up here and right over here and as you can see I'm just pulling the image all the way into this white area. Now. Obviously, the first side effect you're going to see here is there's going to be a slight bit of distortion. But, you know, honestly, for most nature photos or landscape photos, that's not going to really be that big of a deal. It's really tough to tell that in a final photo unless, you know, you were actually there. And truthfully, you'll see once it's done here, it doesn't really seem to make the image suffer too much. Now, we have all of our edges pulled in. And as you can see, we managed to save all the, uh, all the photo information here. I didn't have to crop anything out. Now before I finalize this though, one last trick is I like to go up here and just grab a grid line and uh, a ruler line here and just put it right along my horizon. And as you can see, it is slightly off. So I'm just going to grab this knob and just kind of pull this down to make sure that my horizon is relatively straight. And there we go. So everything looks good. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and it will apply the transformation. And as you can see, our horizon is now nice and level. Now, let me show you another trick here. Okay, now for this one, I'm going to show you another method here. What I like to do is I like to take a grid line, just kind of drag it down towards my horizon here, right about in the middle of it. And as you can see, we're still crooked here. I've reset the image. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate my background layer, hit Command J, and I'm going to hit Command T again to activate our transform tool. I'm going to right click and hit warp, just like we did last time, except this time we bypass the entire uh, crop tool straighten deal. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to use the warp tool and just kind of drag our horizon down over here and bring it up over here and just kind of massage it into position using our warp tool. There we go. That looks relatively straight. We hit return. And as you can see, we have a nice straight horizon. 
Now this works really well as long as there's nothing else in the photo that's going to give away the fact that it is slightly crooked. Uh, these trees and these rocks really don't look crooked so I can get away with it here. If I was having buildings or something in it, this probably would be a little bit tougher to pull off. But anyhow, that's another method there. I typically use the other method more, but uh, here, there's another one for you. Okay, now there are a couple cautionary notes to pass along with this method. The first is you are going to get a little bit of distortion in your image. After all, we are pushing it and pulling it a bit. Normally, this is not a big deal for landscape photos, though. The second problem is this can soften your image a little bit depending on just how crooked it was and how much correction was needed to repair it. For minor corrections, this softness can be easily fixed with just a little bit of sharpening. However, for larger corrections, say over a degree or two, it might become troublesome. Sometimes the best solution is a compromise between this method and cropping. That's it. I told you it was going to be quick. As always, feel free to share this video with anyone you know. Make sure you sign up for my email newsletter so you don't miss any of these tips. And I'd love it if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.